All right, so I got another strength faith build for you that I have really, really enjoyed. I've heard very mixed reviews on this particular weapon that we're going to be using, but I found that in the playthrough that I was doing with it, I did a lot of damage and overall really enjoyed the weapon. So we're going to get into everything that I use for the build, talismans, flasks, where to get everything. So buckle up, because here we go. Now we're going to be looking at the Great Sword of Damnation. This is a very interesting weapon that comes from one of the coolest DLC bosses in the entire game. So this is a remembrance weapon, but its Ash of War Golden Crux is actually a grab attack. You do immense damage against humanoid type enemies that are susceptible to this grab. You are not going to be able to grab giant bosses, obviously, but this is a lot of fun to use. Now we'll get more into the Ash War in just a minute, but this weapon does have a few pitfalls that we're definitely going to talk about as well. However, when it comes to the overall damage feel, moveset, everything else with this build, it does feel really, really good. So without further ado, let's jump right into the Great Sword of Damnation. Now, obviously, we need to talk about Golden Crux first. This is the special weapon skill, and it is a grab attack for humanoid type enemies. You leap into the air and smash the sword down into the top of their head, and then shoot spikes throughout their entire body. Against these types of enemies that can be taken advantage of with this type of grab, you are going to do crazy amounts of damage. Now, if you don't have a humanoid enemy available, but you're doing this on a normal boss, you can then use the second portion of the Ash of War, which is to shove the sword into the ground, allowing huge golden spikes to shoot up from it. This does great area of effect damage, especially if there's a lot of little to mid-sized enemies around you, because typically it will kill them all in one hit. Now, we are going to be doing a decent amount of physical and holy damage with this weapon. However, the attribute scaling for this weapon really sucks. I really wish this strength attribute was higher, as well as having a higher faith scaling other than in D. To have a strength scaling of C and a faith scaling of D pretty much makes the weapon not nearly as appealing as some of the other weapons in the DLC. If that strength scaling and faith scaling were a little bit higher, let's say B and C, that would make things way, way better. However, right now we have a strength scaling of C, deck scaling of D, and faith scaling of D. You're going to need 20 strength and 15 dexterity to wield this weapon, as well as another 20 faith, and it does have a very unique moveset, which I really came to enjoy. You have the typical claymore type moveset where you're going to be swinging horizontally with some swings, but if you do do heavy charged R2s or you roll forward and then hit the light attack, you're going to be doing a poke attack, which is really, really useful. Now, where this Ash of War falls really short is the fact that there is a very very long animation to the second portion of this Ash of War. The first portion, you get a little bit of hyper armor jumping up into the air and then slamming your sword down, but then when you push your sword down even farther, whether it's in the grab or pushing your sword into the ground, you're going to have this very slow animation of you kind of coming up with the sword and just standing there. I've been hit many times in this window where the Ash of War is kind of resetting itself, so it's definitely something you want to watch out for because if you don't, you're going to trade a lot of damage. Now, in order to pick up this weapon, you are going to have to venture deep into the DLC, into the Abyssal Woods, and head down to this location on the map, Midra's Mance. After you defeat the boss that is there, the remembrance that you gather from him will be able to be turned into Round Table Hold, allowing you to get the Great Sword of Damnation. Now, there is a secondary optional weapon you can use for this build, if you even have it. So, I am also using the Sword of Light in this build, but only to buff myself. The Sword of Light overall is not that great of a weapon, but its Ash of War, which also isn't that great, does something very, very special. It will boost any holy damage by 20%. That's going to stack with all the other buffs and talismans we're using here for this build, and having an extra 20% holy damage is going to be so nice, especially when we're fighting bosses that are extra susceptible to holy damage, like Deathrite Birds. But if you don't have that weapon, don't sweat it. The build will still work very well without it. It's just something that I thought would be a little icing on the cake. I do have a YouTube short that links where you can get that weapon, so I will leave that in the description down below. Now, as far as your talismans go, everything is is going to be put forward towards doing more damage with the Ash of War and doing more damage with the regular swings of your sword. So in Talisman slot number one, per usual, anytime we're trying to boost the damage of our Ash of War or special weapon skill, you want the Shard of Alexander. I had someone ask me in my comments recently, do you have any builds that don't have the Shard of Alexander in it? And I'm going to say this, until they give us a better Talisman that does something better than this one does for Ashes of War, I will always have this one in the build if it is an Ash of War that can be boosted. So, you're going to get a 15% increase in your skill damage, meaning that Golden Crux is going to hit 15% harder. In slot number two, we have the Sacred Scorpion Charm. 
boosting our holy damage that we're doing from the holy damage on our weapon, and it's also going to give us a plus 12% increase in our holy damage. However, you are going to take 10% more damage, but I have found that this really doesn't matter in the first few new games. It's only when you get up past new game plus 5 that these talismans are really kind of a hindrance rather than a help. Next up in slot number 3, we have the Retaliatory Cross Tree. This is going to enhance attacks executed after rolling or backstepping, and considering we have a great poke attack with the Great Sword of Damnation, this is definitely a solid talisman you want to put here. If you don't roll a whole lot and you want to put something else here, you can use the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman or the Axe Talisman if you want some damage negation or some heavy charged R2 damage. Moving on to Talisman slot number 4, probably one of my favorite new Talismans we've gotten in the DLC. This is a two-handed sword talisman. This is going to increase your normal and charged heavy R2 attacks as long as you're two-handing the weapon by 15%, so giving us a fantastic damage spike go along with this really nice greatsword moveset. Now, in order to find all of these talismans, the Shard of Alexander is going to be located at the end of Alexander's questline, and I will leave a video down in the description below so you guys can follow along. The Sacred Scorpion Charm is going to be found very early in the game at the Smoldering Church at the border of Limgrave and Kaelid after you defeat the invader that's there. The Retaliatory Cross Tree Talisman is going to be given to you during Lita's questline, and I'm going to be doing a questline video for that very soon, so whenever I do, I will go ahead and link that video down in the description below. And finally, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman is going to be found in the Temple Town Ruins. You just have to do a little bit of parkour to get up onto a roof, and then it will be in the Tallest Tower within a chest. Now for our Flask of Wondrous Physic, this is actually a pretty interesting combination. We're going to be using the Holy Shrouding Crack Tier and the Blood Sucking Crack Tier. We are going to be working with some buffs to kind of negate some of the blood sucking crack tier HP that you lose. But I like to RP that if this sword is from the boss who it is from, then maybe you're just losing a little bit of life every single time you use it. But the Holy Shrouding crack tier is going to boost our holy damage by 20%, which is great, because that's going to stack on top of the Sword of Light buff as well as the Sacred Scorpion charm, giving us a ton of holy damage. And the blood sucking crack tier is going to increase your attack power by 20%, but it's going to drain 1 HP per second. Now, as I said, we're going to try to negate that as much as possible, and I'll go over that when we get to the buffs. Now, the Holy Shrouding Crack here is going to be dropped from the Minor Erd Tree Avatar in Northeast Liurnia, located right here on the map. And the Blood Sucking Crack here is going to be a little bit harder to get because they're only dropped from the Furnace Golems. So you are going to need to go to the Ruins of Unte right here on the map, and there's going to be a Furnace Golem there that you need to take out. After that, you will be acquiring this tier. And lastly, before we get into the stats, let's go over the buffs real quick because a lot of these buffs are going to be very, very helpful for this build. So we are going to have Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. Considering this is a Strength Faith build and we will have the Faith to do it, that's going to give you an extra 15% damage negation as well as an extra 35% increased physical damage, which is also super nice for the DLC. Now, where we are going to try to negate some of the Blood Sucking Crack tier's health loss is from Beastal Vitality. And although it's not a perfect match, it does help out considering you're getting 5 HP per second for 120 seconds, and it really helps negate some of the health you're losing from the Blood Sucking Crack tier. All of this works very, very well to give you some high damage as well as some overall survivability and a really fun build to play. And finally, for the stats of the build, we're going to be having 57 Vigor, 21 Mind, 25 Endurance, 60 Strength, 18 Dexterity, 7 Intelligence, 30 Faith, and 11 Arcane. If you did want to do a little bit more Holy Damage, you could take a little bit out of Strength and put it back into Faith, but I did find that this was a really nice mix of everything that I needed in order to make this build really, really fun and hit really hard. And guys, there you have it. That is going to be it for our Great Sword of Damnation build. I have a Black Steel Great Hammer build coming up, as well as a Backhand Blade build, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that. If you've not subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe before you leave and hit that bell notification. It helps you know when more content is coming out, and believe me, we have a ton of it coming. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here, and until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.